What is up, comic creators? Peter here. We're going to be checking out Bannersnack.com. They have an editor on there that you can do YouTube channel banners on, but uh, they do a lot of other projects on their site. They have a free version we're going to check out. Uh, one of the downsides that I saw from it is that you only get to edit 10 projects on their free version, uh, but 10 is good enough if you're just starting out. I mean, if it's a really high-quality editor, then, you know, 10 is perfect, right? So you probably won't be using this editor a lot for, like, thumbnails and stuff unless you want the paid version. Uh, but uh, as far as the channel banners going, you know, you could create a pretty decent one on there. At least I think so. So let's get into it and see what's going on. All right, so the first thing you do is you log on to Bannersnack.com. I have a link in the description box below for that. And you create a new account or you log into your account. You click, you click New Project, um, which is the plus sign at the top left-hand side of your screen. And then from there, you'll select uh, one banner. Um, and obviously, you're not going to create multiple right now. Uh, and then that'll open up uh, a menu where you can actually uh, select what type of project you're going to be editing. In the bottom right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the YouTube channel banner option, uh, which will give you the proper dimensions and all that kind of stuff that you need in order to create a project like this. So go ahead and open that up. And once we get that open, now initially when I opened this project, I couldn't help but notice that it looks like an exact clone of canva.com. I mean, almost almost the exact same editor. I mean, seriously. So I don't know which one came first. I don't know if Bannersnack came first or Canva came first. Um, a lot of people use Canva. To create my current YouTube channel banner, I used canva.com. I recently did a video on how to create a logo on canva.com. The link is up above or in the description box below. Um, that one get, goes down the basic run through of how to use their editor. So you could take the same principles that you're going to apply to doing a YouTube channel banner uh, with the stuff you learned from that one. Uh, essentially what you would do is log into your Canva account and then say you want to create a YouTube banner versus just a logo. Um, they have those preset dimensions in there as well. So if you want to check that one out as well, you can. But uh, we'll go ahead and move forward with Banner Snack. So upon opening the editor, you've got your basic templates lined up on the left-hand side of the screen, the very top option, the very top icon um, has all the templates. Obviously, you click one, it preloads it into your project, and then you can edit it from there, changing uh, the colors and the text and all that jazz. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Of course, I'm going to try and do this from scratch. So um, the first place I'm going to go is I'm actually going to go to their background option. And that's the second icon uh, below the templates option. And when you go to that background option, you'll see various different uh, tabs and stuff that you can click on to look through. They've got the solid colors, gradients. They've got photos and images and all that kind of stuff. And then if you go to my images and you click on that, um, that'll give you an option to upload your own images into the project. But I'm just going to scroll through their options for right now, see what they have. So obviously, I'm going to do a search for space images uh, because Comet Creator, hello, right? Uh, so as I search space, uh, that'll pull up all their options for space image. I like that comments flying towards you, so I'll go ahead and click that one. Okay, so this is pretty neat, uh, something that I forgot to mention. When you use Bannersnack.com's uh, website and you select an image to load into the project, it automatically fits it and crops it to match your dimensions exactly. That's pretty sweet, to be honest, because um, typically, like with Canva uh, and their editor, when you select an image that you load into your project, you actually have to crop the image yourself to fit within the dimensions of the project, which could cause some problems if you're trying to get something exactly in the center or it's all blown up and you know too zoomed in or whatever, or the image loses its quality as you zoom into it. Um, so that was pretty sick because even that image, like it was a complete... Uh, different shape than what the dimensions were for this project and it loaded it in perfectly so I gotta be honest that's pretty cool a downside that I am noticing is that um, unless I'm an idiot I can't figure out how to edit the image so I can't alter the the saturation or the or filter or um, edit it in any way shape or form so literally I just select an image loads it in and whatever color that image is is what you're gonna get so um, I would say like this is super easy, like if you just want an easy version and you don't want to mess with it, but um, if you want to be able to alter the color or anything like that, um, that's not going to, that's not really going to help you um, looking at it. Um, so I guess you could say that this is an easy version, but like if, like if I want to add in stuff that's the color of my color scheme and my logo or anything like that, it's not going to really match, but we'll just work with it, keep going. Um, and check it out so far so good so alright so now we're gonna do elements tab which is adding in shapes and stuff so 
I'll click shapes and then I'll click the brushed option uh, and then I'll probably select the the circle one I worked with a couple of these so far but I like the the kind of like circular uh, stuff to match kind of like the, what my logo is right now um, so click that in there it loads up a preset image all the way in the corner you can grab it and move it with your cursor right to the center of the page you can use the little boxes to enlarge it um, and then they have some guides to keep it centered little miniature menu pops up here where you can edit it some more you can edit the color um, and they do have the color code in there which is pretty sweet so now I can take the color code from what the color scheme is of my logo and throw it in there but once again because I can't edit that background image my color scheme my color scheme is kinda like navy blue dark blue um, so that's not gonna look very good so uh, to be safe I could probably just do white on this one um, just to keep it simple white is simple white is safe there you go so especially in editing that's a big thing like I said in the logo video I did keep it simple the more complicated you make this the more um, you try to add to the project or try to add more stuff to it the less professional it's gonna look so keeping it simple like a simple airbrushed element in the center of the page here then I'll type in some text uh, to make it look really good um, will allow it to uh, you know look professional and you know not be too complicated to make so this little menu option uh, as you can see here you can select and they have presets you can move the project around um, you can pull it down pull it to the center pull it to the side uh, there's a whole bunch of different options on here which is pretty cool so um, pretty neat um, but like I said too if you just grab the image with your mouse or your cursor and move it across they have the guides in there so you can center it if you want to or do whatever it is you're trying to do with it um, but there's a bunch of different options in this little miniature menu here which is pretty cool like I can grab this little top thing here above the box and spin it and turn it and angle it if you want to uh, and then I can also add a link into it I guess if it was gonna be a digital obviously on a YouTube banner adding a link into it is not really gonna help us uh, so we can continue moving on there alright moving on to text now so with text um, you obviously just like Canva you've got these three text sizes at the top they've got presets in there if you want to add in a preset which is pretty nice but um, as far as like the text sizes like heading text subheading all that kind of stuff it really doesn't matter which one you select because when you load it into your project you're gonna be altering the size of it anyways once it's in there so um, pre-selecting the text putting it in it obviously uh, is gonna be very similar to the elements part it preloads it to the top uh, left hand corner obviously the white is not gonna help because my element is white so I'm gonna change that to black just so I can get it in there and uh, take a look at it but miniature menu sort of changes a bit I can alter the color um, it does have the color code for the text which is pretty sweet and then uh, also in the very top part of that uh, miniature menu where the T is if you click on that um, that will allow you to edit the font of the text um, so you can go through and select the different fonts in there um, for your project and everything's pretty much the same here as far as moving it around it has the guides in there so you can center it with the page uh, get the right placement on there you can use the little boxes to alter the size of the text so it fits within whatever you're trying to uh, fit it into the shape and all that kind of stuff um, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably actually preload that color scheme that I have for my logo on the text to make it look nicer um, and so I can have a matching uh, have a matching color scheme in there so we'll check that out and see how that looks alright another thing that I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna add in a line separating the bigger text which is my name comic creator from the smaller text that I would normally put under the project or oh, sorry not under the project duh, under the uh, name um, probably more or less your um, kinda like your tag or whatever if you have a tag that you say in your video something or you, pretty much like what a lot of YouTube creators say is to put under there is the like something that tells people like what your channel is like what they could expect to see from your channel um, I won't spend so much time uh, trying to type something in there right now I just wanna basically give you guys the run through but what you can do also is if you click on your text like mine I'll click on comic creator there's an option in the miniature menu to duplicate the text and then you can alter the size and stuff but right here same basic principle again with all elements I'm uh, altering the size of the line I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller I'll pr probably match the color with the text um, to make it ma yeah see that looks that looks much better so we'll do that as well um, keep that going and um, we're gonna make that all match line up nicely and then we can 
continue to edit obviously the top end of your page there you can use your the plus sign to zoom in and zoom out of the project um, let's see what else we can do so messing with all these other controls so yeah making that line smaller uh, looks pretty decent that actually gives it a nice uh, look to it and then what I would normally do is like I said add the tagline in underneath there to tell people what your channel is but from that point I mean that's pretty much mostly what I can do here I can't really do much more um, but it does look nice I will say it, it does look really nice um, the fonts and stuff all look really nice on the project so I, I'm I'm really happy with the way it looks um, I like you know to keep it simple like I said <laughs> I mean you know I don't like to overcomplicate it too much so as far as simplicity it's really nice the only thing that really kind of irks me a bit is just the background editing like editing that the background photo that I chose I really wish I could you know alter the alter the filter on it or you know change the color or something like that um, but eh, whatever you make do right all right so let's say hypothetically you're done with the project at this point uh, don't forget to name your project uh, so in the top hand left hand side of the screen you can type in the name of the project there and then on the other side of that on the right hand side there's a green button that says save do not close out of this thing without saving <laughs> so uh, you got to click the save button and then that'll save it to your workspace and so initially when I first did this because I was so used to the way Canva does things uh, from this page here from the editor you can actually download uh, your stuff your project once it's done um, but they don't have that option I actually had to talk to customer service because I couldn't figure out so like I was so in the mindset of working with Canva I couldn't figure out like sitting here how do I freaking download the project and then I finally was done like duh they told me you go to your workspace like what I'm doing here uh, and you actually can view your projects and you can edit them so if you click edit it goes back into the editor but if you click view it opens up another menu that gives you the option to download it so you click on view uh, and then that opens up your options on the right hand side of your screen you'll see uh, PNG or JPEG um, in order to get a PDF you have to go pro um, but we don't need to go pro um, you can download the project just the way it is so I'll just do JPEG to download it um, yeah and so you click on it and then it'll give you the option to download and you move forward with that alright so initial thoughts with banner snack um, looking at the project after it's done I have to say that it looks very clean it comes out very nice looking like it doesn't look like a free version if you know what I mean uh, so I am impressed with that um, I use canva.com for my uh, YouTube banner right now and then sometimes I'll do a thumbnail in Canva but I mostly use PicMonkey as well um, there are various differences between the two platforms uh, I think PicMonkey gives you a little bit more freedom whereas uh, for some people it could be too much freedom if you're just starting out it's difficult to kind of figure out okay how should this look that kind of stuff whereas Canva can be a little bit simpler but still make it look really nice if you're really trying to wrap your head around this and you don't really know what you're doing yet I will say if you are starting out banner snack is a great start um, it only gives you the 10 free projects when you do the free version but they're high quality um, you can keep it really simple and it'll look really really good one thing that I didn't mention too is within banner snack they have um, within the elements tab the logos for like social media so if you wanted to write in your Facebook or your Twitter account or uh, your website address and then it also has a subscribe button in there so you could do a lot of different things where you can add it into your banner I normally don't do that stuff but if you wanted to the options there canva doesn't have that option so that is some one way that banner snack beats out canva um, if you are uh, looking to try to get some help doing like screenshots and stuff I use screenshots on Mac for a lot of my projects I have a link up above or in the description box below that can show you how to do screenshots on Mac if you need help with that that's something that almost everybody knows but sometimes you know you meet someone who's new to, newer to this and they don't realize they can do that and it's very simple and there's no downloads or anything like that you can do it it's a built-in functionality within all Macs and MacBooks so and then I've also got some stuff I'm working on right now where you see the studio set up you see kind of like the blurriness behind me and all that stuff uh, I have a video coming up where I'm gonna show you how to do all of that uh, you'd be surprised to learn right now that I'm actually filming this video from an iPhone 8 
it's not even the current iPhone <laughs> and it's still coming out really well and that's just from having a knowledge of how to do basic stuff like depth of field and lighting and all these kinds of things and then having the proper like apps that can enhance the video quality so I'm gonna do a project showing you how I set up the studio here how I make it look good how I get that blurriness in the back without having to buy a thousand dollar camera because um, that's what we're all about here at comic creator so look out for that do not forget to check the link in the description box below for the who buys this uh, we just linked to a weird thing that you can check out uh, the only hint I can give you is cat butt <laughs> so you gotta check that out it, you just find this stuff on Amazon and you're like who the frig is buying this crap right and that's it alright comic creators I'll see you next time